What is TeamViewer? TeamViewer is used for remote control, remote desktop, online meetings, web conferencing, and file transfers between computers running a wide range of operating systems. TeamViewer supports Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, Linux, iOS, which runs on the iPhone and iPad, and Android. Unlike many remote control programs, TeamViewer works through routers without any special setup like port forwarding. This tutorial will be demonstrating the free, non-commercial use version of TeamViewer. This means you're using it for personal use only, to remote control your own computer, or to provide support to your friends and family. If you're using this for a computer support business or any other commercial reason, you need to pay for a license. Let's download TeamViewer on the main computer we'll be using for the remote support. Let's open a web browser like Internet Explorer in the address bar. Enter teamviewer.com and then press enter. On the TeamViewer homepage, click the download link. By default, we're brought to the Windows downloads, but there are also downloads for Mac, Linux, and mobile downloads. Under the TeamViewer full version Windows section, click the download link. On the download information bar, click the Run button. This will download the file and then automatically start the installer. When the download finishes, the Welcome to TeamViewer window will open. There are two available options for running TeamViewer. We're going to go through installing TeamViewer both ways. We'll be installing an install mode on the main system that we'll be using for remote support, and then we'll be installing it in run mode on the test system that we'll be using to simulate our troubled user. The first option, which is selected by default, is the Install option. The Install option will install TeamViewer onto your system with shortcuts on the desktop, just as most programs are installed. This is the option you'll want to select if you plan on using TeamViewer often to help others. The second option is Run. When you select Run, it does not install the application onto your system, but instead just extracts the files and runs them from memory. This is the option you select if you weren't using the application very often. This is the option you'd probably want the user you're trying to help select, and it will be easiest for them. First, let's go through installing TeamViewer on our main support system. On the Welcome to TeamViewer screen, we'll leave Install selected, and then click the Next button. We are next brought to the Environment screen. The only way to use TeamViewer for free is if you're using it for personal, non-commercial use. This just basically means that you're not using it for business. In this sort of scenario, you'd be using TeamViewer to help your mother, grandmother, friends, and anyone else for free. If you're using this for a computer support business or something else where you're making money from it, then this free license wouldn't apply, and you would need to select the company commercial user license. This license is not free and would cost money. So long as you meet the correct conditions, click the Select the Radio button next to Personal Non-Commercial Use, and then click the Next button. On the License Agreement screen, read the License Agreement, click the Select Both options of I accept the terms of the License Agreement, and I agree that I will only use TeamViewer for non-commercial and private use. And then click the Next button. And now opens the Choose Installation Type screen. This screen is asking us if we want to set up TeamViewer so that we can remotely access our computer when not at home. We're going to select No here, but we'll cover this in a future tutorial. Leave the No radio button selected, and then click the Finish button. Now before we can use TeamViewer, we need to install TeamViewer on the computer that we wish to remote control. This is going to be performed on the computer that you're trying to fix, as in your family or friend's computer. You can either walk them through this part by following along, or you can direct them to this portion of the video so that they th can install it themselves. I'm going to be installing on, and using as a client, a virtual machine of Windows Vista running on my computer. 
the steps are exactly the same if they're using a regular computer, and it's not a virtual one. We'll open our virtual machine. Open a web browser like Internet Explorer. In the address bar, we'll enter teamviewer.com and press enter. On the Team Viewer home page, click the download link. It defaults to the Windows downloads, but there's also downloads available for Mac, Linux, and mobile versions for Android, or iPhone, and iPad devices. Under the Team Viewer full version Windows section, click the download link. On the file download security warning window, click the run button. This will download the file and then automatically start the installer. When the download finishes, you'll be asked again if you wish to run the file. Click the Run button. When the download finishes, the Welcome to Team Viewer window will open. This time, instead of installing the application like we do on our support system, we're going to install this in Run mode on the system we wish to provide support for. If this is somebody you're going to constantly provide support for, you can install in install mode if you wish. Click the Select the Radio button next to Run, and then click the Next button. Installing TeamViewer in Run mode does not actually install the application on your system. It just runs the program from memory. After you close out of the application, you will not be able to restart TeamViewer without running the installer again. On the License Agreement screen, Read the license agreement. Click the Select I Accept the Terms of the License Agreement, and then click the Next button. If you have user account control enabled on your system, click the Continue button. That's it for installing TeamViewer at Run Mode. The user requiring support will now be brought to the main TeamViewer application window. If we look under the Remote Control tab, under the Allow Remote Control section, we will see your ID and password. This is the login information to connect to this computer. After you help the user install TeamViewer, you need to have them give you the correct login information. If they are having a hard time reading the password, you can click on the Password Options button, and then select Create a New Random Password. Now let's go through the steps on how we would initiate a remote control session from our main support computer to the computer needing support. We need to look under the remote control section. Under Partner ID, there's a field available where you enter the ID for the computer you want to control. Enter the ID you were given by the user. Looking underneath, we'll see that the radio button is selected by default for remote control. This allows us to remotely control the keyboard and mouse, and is what we're looking to do. There is also an option underneath this for file transfer. This should be used to just transfer a file, and not to be able to remote control the computer. With the partner ID correctly added, and the remote control radio button selected, click the Connect to Partner button. The TeamViewer authentication window will open, asking you to enter the password for the remote computer. Enter the password you are given by the remote user, and then click the Log On button. A new TeamViewer window will open, showing the remote desktop of the remote user's computer. We'll see that in this new window, anything that I do will also happen on our main system. In addition to moving around the computer, we need to go over some of the basic actions and functions that we'll regularly use with TeamViewer. If we look at the very top of the TeamViewer window, we'll see in the TeamViewer toolbar. On the TeamViewer toolbar, 
we have the options needed to control our team viewer session. We are just going to go over the most common options here. The close button shows up as an X on the far left of the toolbar. If we click this X, or the one on the top right of the window, it'll close the team viewer application window and end the session. The Actions menu will most commonly be used to send the control alt delete signal, although you can also reboot the computer and do other actions from here. There are also view options and audio video options. If you need to transfer a file between the two computers, you can click the File Transfer button and then select File Transfer. A new file transfer window will open, which shows the local computer information on the left and the remote computer on the right. To transfer a file from your local computer to the remote computer, we'd browse to the file that we want to select, select it, select the remote directory, in this case we'll just move it to the desktop, and then click the Send button. We can now see this new links file on the desktop. It also works the same way to receive, but just do things in reverse. If you want to work on the remote computer in full screen mode, you can click the switch to full screen mode button. Clicking the same button will return it back to windowed mode. Let's click the close button to end our team viewer session. Both the user initiating the remote control session and the user that was being controlled will get a message stating that you're using the free sponsored version of TeamViewer. Again, this should only be used for personal, not commercial use. Click the OK button. Once the remote control session is over, the users whose computer was remote controlled should click the X button to close out of the TeamViewer application. Because this user installed TeamViewer in run mode, closing the application is like uninstalling it. Nobody will be able to remote control this computer again unless they download and install it and give out the correct username and password. You should now have the necessary information to be able to install TeamViewer on a local and a remote computer, and then how to initiate a remote control session between those two computers including the screen as well as the mouse and keyboard.